Real Agriculture's coverage of the 2023 Canada's Outdoor Farm Show is brought to you by Pride Seeds. Discover the power of performance. Find out more by going to prideseeds.com. Bernard Tobin here at Canada's Outdoor Farm Show. Today I'm at the fertilizer spreader demonstration where I'm catching up with independent agronomist Pat Lynch. First question for you, Pat, why the focus this year on fertilizer spreading? Okay, good question, Bernard. A lot of things have changed. Number one, we're putting on more fertilizer. Number two, we're doing things as variable rate. Uh, number three, the farmers are farming more land. Uh, traditionally in Ontario, we counted on the retail outlets to do the fertilizer spreading. The reality is now that those fertilizer spreading companies, the retail locations, they really can't handle the demand for all of the equipment they need and when they need it. So what farmers are doing is they are buying their own equipment, they can look after it better, they can manage it better, they can put the right people on it, and they, they can tweak it to the little things that they want to be doing. What about the technology you're seeing out here today, Pat? What do you like? What do you dislike? How has it changed? Okay, the technology is unbelievable what we can do. So we are going to variable rate fertilizing. With variable rate nitrogen, that's an obvious one. That's a no-brainer. That's fairly easy to do. But we're also doing variable rate phosphate and potash and even micronutrients. So these spreaders, they are sectional. So you could have eight sections in a fertilizer spread. Each one of those sections you know, putting on a different rate of a fertilizer. And this goes back to the other reason why are farmers doing it. If you, if you buy a blended product from a fertilizer retailer, they have to put it through their plant, they have to blend it, and there's a significant blending fee. If a farmer has his own spreader, he can apply one product by itself, variable rate in, and then the second product by itself, and then they'll save the cost of blending, plus be more fussy about when and how that fertilizer has gone on. The other, you know, small little things, section control is great, but even, you know, these spreaders now that can spread only one half of the boom. So you're driving down your corn field and the soybeans right beside it. You don't want any nitrogen on it. You drive right down beside it and the other side, you know, just the one side of the spreader is got You're not wasting fertilizer putting it onto the soybeans. Um, the width of these things, like we're, we're talking about doing 90 acres an hour with some of these fertilizer spreaders. So the reality is we saw again in spring 2023, suddenly we don't have enough time and then it got too dry. So we want to get everything done as fast as we can. So if I'm having their own fertilizer spreader, you know, it's going to work. And, and the other thing, like some of these put on really small rates and we can put on really low rates of, of the micronutrients to, to, to top up different parts of the field. Final question for you. A farmer has decided they are going to broadcast. They've decided what spreader technology they're going to invest in. What else do they need to consider to get it right? Okay, so, okay, this is a matter of putting it all in together. So why are we broadcasting? We can't put on enough fertilizer with the planter or the drill or what. So it's common to put on maybe phosphate and potash for two or three years. Can't put that on the planter drill. We've got to broadcast. It's also common in Ontario to do tillage maybe after winter wheat once. So we broadcast on two or three years of phosphate and potash and work it in and that's for the next three crops. So it's all part of a whole system. I take my winter wheat off. I broadcast the fertilizer, I plant a cover crop and carry on. And the other part that's coming in is people like the SWAT map people, they are doing, and soil optics, they are doing various measurements in the ground to show where you're going to get the best use of the fertilizer. Fertilizer's gone up in price, farmers are playing more. There's a lot of variation in these fields, so if farmers can put the right amount on the right place, there's a lot of economics involved in it and it's part of the whole way of that we are evolving.